Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sawa Sawa Network, a program aiming to amplify the voices of South Sudanese around the world. I am your host, and my name is Samuel Gorang. Today, I will be moderating a panel discussion, or reflections actually, on South Sudan's Independence Day. Today, July 9th, 2019, marks the eighth anniversary of South Sudanese independence, a day when her people broke away from Sudan following five decades of intermittent conflicts and two civil wars. Mindful that it has been eight years since that day and that so much has happened in between, today offers an opportunity for each and all of us to reflect on what it means to have our own country, South Sudan. So joining us in the studio are three inspiring South Sudanese leaders with distinctive personal experiences and careers. First is Ambassador Philip Jada Natana, head of South Sudan's mission to the United States. Ambassador Natana has an extensive diplomatic training and expertise. Since 2007, he has served South Sudan on various diplomatic fronts in several countries, including Eritrea, South Africa, and currently the United States. In the middle is Ms. Elizabeth Achu Jarvis, Me Fellow 2015, Yali Fellow 2016, Chevening Scholar 2018, and the United States Institute for Peace Fellow starting in October 2019. Finally, we have Mr. David Dow Achuth, Executive Director of COSA and former Congress Congressional Legislative Fellow. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining Sawa Sawa on this historic occasion. And now, I want this to be really um, an opportunity to reflect in a very conversational way and feel free to piggyback or push back on each other's statement. And so I want to begin with you today, Ambassador. Um, what does July 9th um, mean to you as an individual? Uh, South Sudan got its independence uh, after a long struggle. But the culmination, of course, was when 98% uh, or more than 98% of South Sudanese voted in a referendum uh, <coughs> to decide their fate. And they chose, they opted to have uh, their own independent country, that is South Sudan. Um, uh, so to me personally, I think uh, this is an opportunity and uh, really uh, to reflect on the sacrifices that uh, South Sudanese uh, in general have paid, whether those who have struggled through um, the, you know, the battle of the gun, but also much more those who actually voted. So this is a decision that has been collective. And I think for me personally, I think uh, I'm proud of this moment because this is one of the moments that we as South Sudanese all came and decided and as one people to say, this is the way there, where we want to go. Mr. Jarvis. Thank you, Mr. Garan. Um, Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be hosted by um, Sawa Sawa Network. So um, July 9th is very special. It's a very special day for me. Um, and I would say uh, it's a special time. It's a day that I worked so hard to see and uh, celebrate. Uh, because reflecting back um, to 2010, 2011, uh, by then I was finalizing my uh, bachelor degree at the University of Khartoum. Uh, and at the same time, I was the last fellow uh, to chair the South Sudanese Students Union by then. So uh, with all that going on, I felt that I had a responsibility to do and give in more um, to fellow South Sudanese students and my country, of course. So um, yeah, I remember me and my colleagues were um, organizing yallies and uh, rallies and networks and, and, and workshops for how to educate um, South Sudanese on elections and referendum. Yeah, and then also attaining to students' fees um, issues. Yeah, so although it came with some so social and psychological implications, mm -hmm yet it remains very special to me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Samuel. And uh, it's my honor to share the platform with you and the ambassador and thank to your network. Um, <clears throat> July 9 is a very significant day for all of the South Sudanese because on the 9th of July, when they raised 
you know, the South Sudanese flag. Many South Sudanese thought that we so far came to the, you know, to achieve the dream that we thought we would never have. And for me personally, I just keep looking back at the time when we were running, you know, on our way to Panjado, coming back from Ethiopia, and when in, and inside South Sudan, and when we were in Equatoria, and, and the Northern Army came all the way to a place called Pagari. And you thought at that, that time, we, we as South Sudanese were thinking, this is it. You know, so when Jun July 9 actually happened, it was as if everything has been wiped away and we have been renewed and reborn. Yes. And, 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 and uh, I keep watching the videos uh, that the South Sudanese were celebrating on the street all over the world. So it is a very significant day for us as, as individuals and those who participate in the struggle like ambassador. And it is also a significant day for us, South Sudanese in the diaspora, because yes. we were given the opportunity to contribute to the independence of South Sudan by voting. Thank you. And I, I actually uh, observe when you talk, it looks like it was a very exciting moment for various reasons, for various personal, for various uh, collective uh, reasons. And I too feel the same. And when we became independent in 2011, I remember there was a lot of excitement going around around the world. And, uh, our friends, people who supported us during the struggle, uh, ourselves, the people in the diaspora, you know, uh, did incredible uh, role to actually contribute to the independence. And then, two years later, in 2013, you know, uh, we did the unthinkable, and the country started descending into war, and it's been six years since then, actually, it's, if I'm right, yeah, six years since yeah. 2013. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that war has cost approximately it has killed approximately 400,000 South Sudanese. And it has displaced 3.7 million South Sudanese. And this is our own, our own doing, you know. Mm -hmm. Whether you blame who or you blame who is our own um, uh, collective shame. Mm -hmm. And so um, w when, when you think about that, um, is, is, is there hope for South Sudan? Is there hope for South Sudan? No. Um, if you, I can start that. I'm, I'm a very optimistic person by nature, and um, you know, David Dahl just actually alluded to it earlier that you know when he was walking through all those difficult moments, you know, uh, in Ethiopia, back in South Sudan, through Kenya, and so on, you never thought that a day like July 9th would come and South Sudanese would may become independent, you know, and assert um, their own future. Um, uh, but, um, and I said this earlier on when, when I talked about the day that we all came and voted for the referendum, and um, you would never think that South Sudanese would come together as one people and decide for their, you know, for their futures. So um, if you judge our uh, experience by what has ever happened uh, to South Sudanese, uh, I'm very hopeful, hopeful that this dark period would put behind uh, us. And we don't even need to look very far, even starting back from right where we're staying here, this great country. You know, after independence, people fought together as, as, as one country. But then after independence, then some of these um, uh, internal problems rear up, you know. So I think what we need actually, not is just, just to wait and hope, but actually to, um, to start working to see that mm -hmm. we put this dark history behind us and we look to the future where South Sudanese can, uh, you know, offer something bright, you know. I mean, uh, probably I'm the only person here who have got kids, but I, you know, I mean, from a personal point of view, I don't want my kids to live in war. I want them to live in peace and enjoy the future. So uh, it's not just hoping for a better future and thinking that day is going to um, be a better future, but I think that we have to work collectively to see that that peaceful, uh, prosperous future for South Sudanese actually is achievable, but through our, our work. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chu. Uh, yes, of course. I think um, there is a lot of hope. Um, I think our generation is bringing a lot of hope to the table, not only to South Sudan, but to the whole world. Um, and I also want us to bear in mind that hope comes in with change, and change is the only constant. So um, the fact that some of our leaders overlooked the necessity of um, prioritizing uh, the welfare of the South Sudanese citizens and um, our dignity 
doesn't mean that it's going to last. Their time will come and this will end. So I have, I have so much hope. Yeah. Mm, I agree with everything they mentioned, but I'd just like to add a little bit. So on a personal level, um, when I think of July 9, you know, it reminds me of Dr. Grang and all the fallen heroes and the people that we have lost, including my own family members. But what happened after our independence in 2013 actually affected me personally again because I lost my mother, as you know, in Bordown in 2013. But as a South Sudanese and the significance of having independent because now I could be one of the few people on this planet to say I have witnessed the birth of a nation. In order to preserve that, you know, that, that, that precious nation, I have accepted the loss, you know, and I have used, you know, my own pain and turned that into a work for good, you know, through peace and dialogue. That is why I am managing a United States Institute of Peace Diaspora Dialogue. You know, so because I looked at it, I told, you, you know, on the day we learned my mom has been killed, I called my brothers and I said, listen, she was, she, our mom is one person. South Sudan has more than 11 million people. Yeah. Each one of us has to make a choice. For me, I choose to make, you know, I choose to make a peace with, with the loss. So for all South Sudan, my challenge to all of us is that Yes, we have all been affected from every corner, from east, west, south, mm -hmm. all South Sudan, every household has been affected by the 2013. But in order to make sure we continue to celebrate such a significant day, mm -hmm. we each must have that forgiving, forgiving heart. So that's what I did. And I think when we do that, there is hope for South Sudan. Because all of us as South Sudanese know that we cannot change the history mm -hmm. of what happened. Mm -hmm. We have done a lot of pain to ourselves. But we can fix what tomorrow will look like. So that's, that, that kind of gives us all hope. Excellent. So when I hear your reflections, um, there are some emerging themes here. And I think I'll just focus on uh, perhaps two of them. And one, actually three. One I'm hearing is actually the forgiveness, you know, be able to forgive ourselves for what has happened, whether you know, we did it or somebody else did it. Um, we have to you know, forgive. and and move on. The other thing I'm also hearing is um, the change. You know, we have to constantly be out on the look and change and make our country uh, better in our personal and also our professional uh, capacities. And also from Mr. Ambassador, we hear the word of hope. You know, this is not just about me. It's also about uh, my children. It's about our children. I also have children. And I also um, want to see a better future for them. And so I. Let me begin with you, um, Mr. Dow. When people read in the media or wherever you go and you introduce yourself as South Sudanese, you know, the first thing that comes to people's mind mm -hmm. is greed, is violence, you know, these are um, corruption and just all these negative um, dimensions that often get associated with us. Mm -hmm. And so, what. <coughs> Is that, is that all there is actually to South Sudan, the South Sudanese, before we had our independence and after we had our independence and looking into the future, is that all there is to South Sudanese, the people and the country? No, uh, no, that is not all there is. Uh, but it is true that uh, wherever you go, even in Europe, in Africa, there is, there is a fatigue. You know, our, our friends in, in other parts of the world you know, have the fatigue because it has been so long. Because, you know, the excitement on, on, on the day South Sudan became independent was all, not only for South Sudanese. So everybody around the world was so excited because of the pain and suffering they have witnessed over the last 30, uh, the previous 30 years. So when all of that went away in just a blink of an eye, people thought, oh, this war is going to be tomorrow. It will be next day. And then it continued. Now we are in uh, eighth year. Uh, you know, of the uh, fifth year of the conflict. And that has created a moral fatigue from our friends because they got exhausted because it seemed as if there is a good news and then it become bad news. Mm -hmm. So, but the reality is South Sudanese has a very vibrant culture. And many South Sudanese community, all of them, all 64 tribes, if you look at Europe, in Africa, in, U in the United States, mm -hmm. you see the identity of South Sudanese 
you know, because they practice, you know, been practicing uh, traditional culture. Mm -hmm. You know, people are living together. So, in the country South Sudan, if we have peace as we hope to have, mm -hmm. you know, we could have even Afri one of the East Africa most uh, busiest uh, tourists than Kenya. You know, because we have the reserve, the wild uh, life reserved in South Sudan and the Nile and so forth. So, what I would tell um, the non-South Sudanese, the friend and supporters of the South Sudan, is to say, you know, hang in with us. And and all you see, the corruption. All leaders are not corrupt. You know, all leaders are are, are not you know you know thirsty for blood. It's not true for all of them. But this situation crippled those who want to do the good thing. So, but if we hang in there, there is a possibility Thank for you. those Thank little you. leaders. Okay. Ms. Jarvis? Yeah, I think um, there is so much out there for us to see and um, witness. There is uh, a lot of positive vibes and good stories that we can share about South Sudanese in general, um, whether back home or here in diaspora. Um, I remember in 2017, 2018, when I was chosen for, for the Shivning Scholarship, we met with um, Mr. Chris Strutt, who is now the, the ambassador, okay. South the Sudan. British ambassador yeah, to South Sudan. And we were told that we were the largest group mm -hmm. ever from South Sudan to be accepted as scholars. So, and we were only seven. So you can imagine the progress, which means before that, yes. South Sudan, yes. yeah, yes. only one or two. Um, on the other level, you can just look at, um, we just got two young, brilliant men join the NBA. We have uh, Luol Mayen. And two actually the played for the World Cup in 2000. Uh, yeah, last year, we right? have Luol Mayen, yeah. um, the, the game developer. Mm -hmm. We have um, at least from 2018 until now, I think uh, five young women published books. I, I can testify mm -hmm. to that. Dr. Yeah, Ayak, a dude, a dude who was the, t the w global model, yeah. supermodel. The on the, yeah, yeah, on modeling as well. Um, we have a dude, a cage. We have Daki. Mm -hmm. um, there are books, Niboldim, Ayak, Sholdeng Alak. There is so much going on, and like this initiative now, the Sawa Sawa Network. So I believe that there is so much. We just Maybe we're just not looking into that side yep. <laughs> yeah thank you thank you yeah yeah uh, i think just to add a little bit onto that i think um there may be two things that stand out one is um we are just seeing a shift you know i think before people used to be the one who own our narratives and if your um, narrative is owned by someone else um uh, stereotyping stigmatization you know, stuff like that would always come back. I used to live in South Africa, as you mentioned, as the ambassador in South Africa. And when the xenophobia attacks started taking a place in, in South Africa, nobody talked about all the tourism, the best parts of South Africa, and so on. Um, and I had this encounter. I was just, you know, I mean, going past immigration in Uganda, going back, and this um, immigration officer just looked at me and said, oh, you know, you still look young. What are you going to do in South Africa? You know, you remain here in Uganda because they're going to kill you. I heard that they're killing, you know, foreigners there in South Africa. So don't go there, you know. So these kind of, you know, stories are not um, unique to South Sudan. But what I just want to say here is that uh, we should uh, have a, a shift in that we try to, you know, own the, the narrative. And we also try to project what is what is positive about uh, South Sudan, like the stories that have been mentioned here, and there are actually much more uh, that, that are happening. So we need to, I mean, like the theme of your, you know, when you started off, you need to amplify those positive things that we have among us as, as South Sudanese. Thank you, thank you. And one last question is, um, is that as you reflect on this day, I know it's already been July 9th in South Sudan. Here in the United States, it's actually July 9th, and people are celebrating um, and are doing different things. Um, unfortunately, uh, many of us could not be here uh, with us in the studio today, but they will listen to this. And so as you think about that, what is your, what like concluding uh, statement can you give to South Sudanese, friends of South Sudanese, other people who are interested in South Sudan, what kind of concluding message can you uh, offer? And I will begin with you, Mr. Mm. Dao. Uh, the message is very simple. For South Sudanese audience, 
the one, one of the most important things that we need to focus is to come together and forgive each other and look into tomorrow. And, and as you celebrate today, the best thing you can do is to pick up a phone and call somebody from a different community you never spoke with. You know, or send them a message on Facebook and say happy 4th of Ju uh, 9th of July. And I think that the dialogue in our community should be us together, not us versus them. There is no such thing as us versus them. So I encourage the South Sudanese audience uh, you know, and South Sudanese people in the diaspora and back home to make sure we overcome that. You know, we need to find our own voices, as Ambassador mentioned. And for non-South Sudanese audience, supporters of South Sudan and friends of South Sudan, is to, you know, is, is patience. You know, patience is very important. I understand the frustration and the fatigue, but you know, they have to, they should be patient with us and continue to, for, to support South Sudan, as, as she mentioned, the young South Sudanese, you know, are you know are basically basically doing amazing things, and for that, I think South Sudan deserved our patience, and tomorrow will be a better day. Thank you, Ms. Jarvis. Ah, oh, a message to conclude with. Um, I would say that um, we, as South Sudanese in general, we suffered a lot. We experienced, and we never experienced. Uh, as a total state of peace, or at least maintained peace for a certain period of time. So I would say that this is time for us to get together, harmonize, encourage, and lift each other, and um, work together to develop our country. I don't wish to see a South Sudanese man or woman degrading another fellow just because of their ethnicity or political affiliation. Uh, to women, I think we are so exceptional, and we have been doing exceptional job since before the independence and now, because there is something that we need also to highlight. You know, uh, we women, we, do a, we take a lot of respons responsibility on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And um, whether here in diaspora or back home, and people might not bring this into attention. So uh, I think we need to be each other's keepers and also um, just have a solidarity or sorority in our own space. Thank you, thank you. The, um, I said earlier that you know, South Sudan became an independent country uh, due to collective efforts. So 98% uh, of South Sudan is voted for this. So uh, this victory is actually um, a victory for South Sudan. All of us need uh, to celebrate. So my message today would be to the South Sudanese, um, given the fact that we have uh, the majority of our population is uh, is uh, young people. Uh, this country is a country of the future. So I think for us now, um, in all walks of life, whether you're working in government, whether you you're doing your own business, whether you you know you you are an activist and so on, I think what we should be doing is just really to come and work to collectively together so that we hand over this country uh, to the future. You know and. Um, uh, the future would be only positive if we really make an effort. It's not going to fall from the sky, it's not going to come from anywhere else, but I think it's for us. So South Sudan, I think my message would be, you know, this country be belongs to the future and we should be working to make it a peaceful and prosperous country for all. Thank you, thank you. And with that, I want to say thank you to all our speakers. Thanks for your insightful reflections and discussion this morning. And to all the Sawasawa audience and fans around the globe, Thanks for watching. Today, we can be together, we can be a force for good in South Sudan and the diaspora. Sawasawa encourages active and civil dialogue to advance our goals together. So follow us on Facebook and YouTube by searching our name, Sawasawa Network. Thank you. <laughs>